say, great, I think the transition's going to be really terrific, and we're going to take it into the fourth, and I think we're going to have potentially a great fourth quarter. There's tremendous pent-up demand. I don't know if Kevin said that or Larry Kudlow, uh, but uh, they're telling — they see it. But I feel it. I feel it. I think sometimes what I feel is better than what I think, unfortunately or fortunately, Phil. But I tell you what, I feel it. And I will say that I think next year is going to be a, a spectacular year in terms of growth, in terms of bringing our country back. I think we're going to have a really good year. We want to be where we were, and I think we can actually surpass where we were. And we were the strongest anywhere in the world. We were the best that we ever were, but we were the strongest anywhere in the world. But uh, I view what we have now as obviously a period of uh, here we are. This, it is what it is. We just got hit by a vicious virus that should have never been allowed to escape China. They should have stopped it at the source. They didn't do that. 184 countries have been devastated by it, including China, by the way, because I looked at their numbers, and their numbers are terrible. And uh, it's just a very tough situation for the people of our country. All the loss, the death, it's a terrible thing. But I think we're going to make a very strong comeback. It'll start with the third quarter. I think you're going to see some, some pretty good numbers. I think you're going to see really good transition numbers. But the fourth quarter is going to be — I really believe it's going to be terrific. And I think that next year is going to be a great year. But is it fair for the voters to take into consideration your handling of the pandemic when they assess whether to reelect you in the fall? Sure, Not I fair. think they do. I think they have to do a number of things. They do have to do that. And maybe Phil could speak to that, because I think I've handled it. And not me. I think our whole group has been spectacular. We had ventilators. We didn't have any. We built them. We have thousands, tens of thousands are right now under construction. And we've given, as Phil said, uh, you got, I think, more ventilators than anybody in the United States. New Jersey needed correct. them very badly. Yep. And there was never a person that needed a ventilator that didn't get one in any state. Not one person that needed a ventilator. So we didn't say, he didn't get a ventilator, and somebody passed away. Somebody didn't make it. Now we had a mask problem. Now we have so many masks, we don't know what to do with them. We had a big problem. And you have to understand, we took over. The cupboards were bare. And the thing that, frankly, it's not as tough as the ventilator situation. We're the king of ventilators. But what we have done is, on testing, we're doing numbers the likes of which nobody's ever seen before. And I told you, the president of South Korea, President Moon, called me to congratulate me on testing. And we did more tests than any other country anywhere in the world. And I think they told me yesterday a number. If you add up the rest of the world, we've done more testing. And it's a higher quality test. So I think we've done a, a I think the whole team, federal government, we built hospitals for you and others. You bet. Uh, we built medical centers. And I'm talking about thousands and thousands of beds Doing the things we love? Uh, many, many medical centers. We had, as you know, we had the governor of Florida and the governor of Louisiana over the last two days. They could not have been, and one was a Democrat, and this gentleman happens to be a proud Democrat. Uh, they could not have been more supportive of the effort of the federal government. And I'll Are tell you, you Jim, let, let me just tell you, we have, we started off with empty cupboards. The last administration left us nothing. We started off with bad, broken tests and obsolete tests. What we've come up with, between the Abbott laboratories, where you have the five minutes, did yep. they test you today? They did test me. For, Good. Uh, I'm now good. I feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm negative. You did the, you did the five minute, the I Abbott did the, test. The, the quick turnaround. It's so good. I feel like a new man. That's a brand, you know what, that's a brand new test. That didn't exist eight yep. weeks ago. Yep. And now it's like the rage. Everybody wants that test. Uh, no, I think we've done. I think we've done a really great job. But the Obama administration, people from the Obama administration, would disagree on your assessment that the cupboards were bare. They, they said well, that there well, was equipment. And I know, Jim. Let, let me just tell you. That's what you say. Broken test. It's a new virus. So how could the test be broken? We had a broken a test. Jim, we had broken tests. We had tests that were obsolete. We had tests that didn't take care of people. But here's what's very important. If you take a look at the swine flu, H1N1, or as Joe Biden would say N1H1, but it's actually wrong. He didn't even know the name. Okay, H1N1, the swine flu. The Obama administration was a disaster. And they did polling on how did they do. And their polls were so negative, so bad. They did a very poor job. 
And they did a poor job on a lot of things. They did a poor job on our military. They did a poor job on our ammunition. When I got here, we had no ammunition. Just like we had no ammunition, we had very little medical, too. So I think when you ask, how did we do? And I have to say it because the news is so fake and so corrupt. Uh, I think we did a spectacular job. I'm not even referring to me. I'm referring to all of these people, including your people who have been working with my you people bet. so closely. You bet. But the federal government has done a, a spectacular job to a point where we're building now. We're going to have thousands and thousands of ventilators, and we're helping other countries because Phil doesn't need ventilators. You needed a very bad one to begin. We did. And, and maybe you could say something to Jim's question. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have a view on the history, but I will say this in our hour of need, whether it was ventilators, uh, the Army Corps building out capacity, FEMA uh, with our testing sites. And, and a big part of our ability to reopen as fast as we all want to is to rapidly expand testing. Right. And you all literally in the here and now this week are helping us in a big way uh, to at least, uh, I, I would expect by the end of May, thanks to you and your team's help, we'll be able to at least double, and I hope more than double, our testing capabilities. And, and because of that, that will allow us to much more aggressively and responsibly do the reopening that we all need. Need to do. And Phil, how do we do on ventilators, as an example, where you were really in, yeah. you needed them badly? Yeah, we, we got them. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. And, and I'm told uh, that we were the number one reci state recipient of I ventilators. Um, and th this was, you know, we were at the edge, and this is life or death stuff, and we got them, and we we're forever thankful for that. Thank you. Mr. President, on, uh, on operation, uh, on this uh, vaccine operation, warp speed, who's in charge of that? And are you over-promising when you say you're going to have 300 million doses of vaccine? In, in no, I'm not over-promising. I don't know who said it, but whatever the maximum is, whatever you can humanly do, we're going to have. And we hope we're going to come up with a good vaccine. Uh, Johnson & Johnson and Oxford and lots of different great uh, companies, uh, representatives of our country in some, time, in some ways. NIH is working very hard and doing a terrific job. Uh, no, I hope we're going to have a vaccine, and, and we're going to fast-track it like you've never seen before. If we come up with a vaccine, I think they probably will. And who's in charge of that Operation Warp Speed? Uh, we have uh, — you know who's in charge of it, honestly? I am. I'll tell you. I'm really in charge of it. I, I could say somebody else, I will say we're dealing with, as you know, the general and the admiral. They're very much in charge. Uh, but I think probably more than anything, I'm in charge. And I'm the one that gets blamed, and I get blamed anyway. Don't forget, if we come up with a vaccine in record time, they'll say I should have done it faster. But we have a lot of good, uh, a lot of good possibilities. Like the Gilead yesterday, that was a big thing. That was a big thing. And, uh, as explained, and I think very importantly, that was a step. You know, that was a big step, 31 percent step. But the step means, I guess, Debra, what Tony yesterday was explaining, the step means you now take another step, another, all of a sudden you're up to 50, 60, 70. But that was a very positive, that was a big step, as I understand it. Okay? Mr. Thank President, you. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, go ahead, please. Uh, thank, thank yeah, Jeff, go. Thank you, sir. Uh, the intelligence agencies today said that they agree with the scientific community that the virus did originate in China, but was not man-made and was not genetically modified. Do you agree with that? Well, I haven't seen the report yet, but I will tell you if you uh, speak to the head of intelligence right now, you speak to the head, uh, they did say that uh, I was given a briefing when I said I was given it, not before. And they also said that it wasn't specific and it was not a panic briefing. It wasn't like, oh, we're going to be invaded. It was in January later January. Uh, and I think, I think what you'll do is you'll speak to them. In fact, I'll ask Mark to make a report to you, because uh, the, uh, the news was totally, uh, you know, as usual, fake and corrupt. So uh, intelligence is doing a report, and the report turned out to be exactly as I said. Okay. So, Mr. President, so you're saying that you got a briefing in January about No, I'm not the, saying about no, no, I'm not. You didn't hear me. I said, Intelligence is saying it, and so they're going to give a report, and uh, it will make you very unhappy because it makes you so wrong. Well, you in particular. All right, go ahead behind you, please. Please, Governor. States received 150 billion in the First Cares Act. 
what are what are you going to need now uh, to get back on your feet? What have you told the president on that front? And how do you address Republican complaints that the federal government should not be bailing out states who were uh, badly managed uh, prior to the pandemic? Yeah, so I've, I've been in office two, going on two and a half years, and I got elected to sort of fix the economy, and we, we made a lot of progress on what I would call the legacy issues. Record pension payments, stabilizing indebtedness, record surpluses, uh, and as Mike Tyson says, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. Yeah. And, uh, we, and we did. And we did. So we, we've, we've made, we've got a plan, and we're, we're comfortable with the progress. That, it's going to take a while on the legacy stuff. The financial assistance we need, and we need a significant amount. This is a big hit, and this is somewhere in New Jersey alone could be 20 to $30 billion. But this is to allow us to keep firefighters, teachers, police, EMS on the payroll, serving the communities in their hour of need. And that's something that um, we feel strongly about. We don't see it as a bailout. We, we see this as a partnership, uh, doing the right thing in what is the worst healthcare crisis in the history of our nation. Uh, and I want to, again, thank the president for an extraordinary spirit of partnership across the whole spectrum of our needs. And I want to reiterate that. Thank you. I will say that's a tough question, because you're talking about the states and whether you call it a bailout or a lot of money. And that's a, a lot of it's for years long before you were there. Uh, you can't have a better representative than this man. That I can tell you. Plus, he's an old Goldman Sachs guy. <laughs> and what they don't know about him He's done a great job, but he went through a big operation just before this happened, and that's a hell of a thing. Thank you, know, you Mr. That was a, that was a big deal. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, are you worried about the food supply chain? No, right not now? at all. No, we solved that problem. We solved that problem yesterday. I expect to see the supply chain as strong as ever, maybe stronger for certain reasons. We did something. We got. We had a roadblock. It was a legal roadblock more than anything else. Mm -hmm. It was a, a foolish thing that uh, nobody ever took care of for a long time, and we took care of it. Uh, no, I, I expect things to go very smoothly. So the American people shouldn't worry about any shortage? Not even a little bit. There's a lot of supply, too. But now they're going to get it. And uh, that was solved yesterday, uh, very late in the evening. OK? Mr. President, at what point did people need another check if unemployment is at 20? Well, we're talking about that. I know a lot of people are talking about it. But we've given a lot of stimulus. And again, we think uh, now it's, it's so great. I'm so happy that you're opening up parks and things, because that's a big step for New Jersey, because they were hit very hard. Uh, I think that uh, I think you're going to see something that's going to surprise maybe the world. And you know, we're the leader of the world. We're really the leader, in this case, the leader of the world. And we've done better. If you look at our deaths, if you look at mortality rates, if you look at the things we're, in fact, I'm going to get a chart, because it's maybe the most impressive thing right? How we've done. And that's a tribute to the governors, and it's a tribute to the federal government and all of us working together. But I would love you to get that if you could, because we're right at the top, meaning top in a positive way of, of those charts. Uh, I think you're going to see uh, economic numbers that are going to be fantastic. I believe it very strongly. Uh, and you're going to start to see it with the transition period, which is number three. And uh, quarter four, I, you're going to have tremendous numbers. We have tremendous numbers. And I think next year you're going to really have tremendous numbers. Mr. President, can, can we ask you about uh, General Flynn? Yeah. Are you going to pardon him? This is what you tweeted back in December 2017. I had to fire General Flynn because he lied to the Vice President and the FBI. Yeah. Do you still believe that he lied to the Vice President and the FBI? Yeah, well, I tell you, for that? Sure. Uh, when I looked at what they did to him, they tormented him. Dirty cops tormented General Flynn. General Flynn is a fine man, 35 years or so in the military. Uh, you don't get to be where he is by being bad, that I can tell you. And then, he, right at the beginning of the administration, the dirty cops came in. And you see the notes, Jim. I mean, whether you're on our side, that side, whatever. I mean, I assume, let's all talk about fairness. What they did to General Flynn, and by the way, to Roger Stone and to others, was a disaster and a disgrace. And it should never be allowed to happen in this country again. And what I really hoped, because uh, CNN tormented him, in all fairness, I really hope to see, because they haven't been doing it, and I appreciate your question, I hope to see that CNN will not even apologize, which they should, but just cover it fairly. 
because he's in the process of being exonerated. If you look at those notes from yesterday, that was total exoneration. These were dirty, filthy cops at the top of the FBI, and uh, you know the names better than I do, and they were dishonest people. Now we have to see what's going to happen. But General Flynn was treated like nobody should, and I'm not talking about generals, I'm saying like nobody in this country should be treated. So and they did it right at the beginning. They did it right, Jim, they did it right. Well, look at what they did to the guy. I mean, he couldn't have known too much what was happening. They came at him with 15 buses, and he's standing in the middle of a highway. What they did to this man, they tormented him. They destroyed him. But he's going to come back, like I say, he's going to come back bigger and better. But what they did to him, and I hear there's a lot of other stuff coming out of I believe everything I'm reading, because I like to stay out of it. I don't have to stay out of it at all. But I like to stay out of it. And, Jim, what they did to him is terrible. And I hope that CNN is going to give him a fair shake and cover it, this, because I think it's very important. Yeah, sir, just to follow up on, was it a mistake to fire him? Would you bring him back on to the administration? Well, what I wish I had was all the information where they were uh, out to get him. They wanted him. They were trying to force him to lie. You see the, the written statements where they were trying to force him into a position where we can get him on a lie, or can we get him this way or that way? This is terrible. This is like what happened in, and I'm not going to name the countries because we deal with these countries, okay? But what would happen in other countries, not the USA, what they did to General Flynn and others, and others, is a disgrace. He, and I hope, really, I hope your networks are going to cover it. Because, you know, I've seen where it's the biggest story in the world a year ago and a year and a half, and Flynn, Flynn, Flynn. And then he's essentially exonerated. Now, that's not official yet, but when you read the notes, how could you do anything else? And I hear there's, I hear there's much, he I hear, Jim, I hear there's much more the coming up. I think it would be so good for CNN if you covered it honestly and if you reported it honestly. That it would be so that. good for the network. Okay, with that, thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim.